Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's jump into it. Um, for anyone who's here hanging out, welcome. Welcome. This is our actually our first official session as part of this 12-week community building cohort. This is week two. Last week, we did some introductions. This week, we are diving into some of the basics of Web3 for creators, breaking down some of these more complex concepts in an easy to understand way, talking about some of the implications and use cases for creators as well. Um, so if you're here and you have questions, please do not hesitate to ask them. Um, you can use that question, ask and answer form bar on the right hand side uh, to ask questions at any point in time. And I'll be here making sure that John and Mike can both answer those questions. We have some good stuff to share. So, um, but to kick into what we're doing here today on who these guys are, I'll give a quick brief introduction of both of you. Um, so John here on the top in the hat um, is a creative producer with two Emmy Award nominations, one Emmy win to his name. He's produced some really cool content over the last, I don't know, decade. Um, some of the biggest influencers and brands um, that I've ever known anyways. Um, you have some Best, some best-selling personal branding book books uh, alongside some great creators, Logan Paul, Gary Vaynerchuk, Seth Godin, big names. Um, and to me, you really stand out, John, when it comes to storytelling and brand building. You've led some amazing teams and continue to do so, creating branding and content experiences. Um, and over the last year, made a pretty substantial impact in the world of Web3, along with also Mike, who's here, who's kind of the, the engine under the hood if you will, when it comes to some of these more complex topics and technical operations development and really all things uh, in, in the span of Web3. So Mike, you've had a tremendously heavy hand in some of the big projects over the course of the last year that we've worked on as well when it comes to some of these Web3 activities. And you have single-handedly schooled me on just about everything that I think I know uh, when it comes to Web3 as well. So I'm excited to dig into this. You are, in your own right, a business entrepreneur. You've been learning and thriving and integrating all these various tools into content creation and brand building efforts. Um, so between the two of you, I'm excited to dig into this um, and get some questions answered. And let's break it down in the most basic way, because not all of us here are developers. Not all of us um, have been sleuthing around online for years to understand what's going on in this world of Web3. But newsflash, it's coming for us all. It's here already. So let's get into it. And again, feel free to use that question bar on the right hand side, you guys. This is going to be recorded as well. So we're live right now, but we'll always be able to come back to this um, as, you know, to, to see how your questions get answered and hopefully get some new insights along the way. So I will kick it over to you guys. Awesome. A chat GPT intro. I think those things work. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. And, and Mike's the, Mike's the engine. Um, Mike is the, uh, the engine under the hood. I think he's like one of those cars that has the engine over it too, or at least those little trucks I used to have back then. Cause he is, he's done some big things, not just behind the scenes. He's built some, some contracts for, for the Vayner agency. Like, so, which I always say is like the Vayner name is going to be on the Mount Rushmore's of web three and NFTs. And, and they've come to, to, to Mike for, uh, some advice and, and specifically built some contracts for them. So we've, um, We've been on this journey, this Web3 NFT journey for two years for me of just like trying to understand what the heck this is. And it's been it like literally taking years off my life. Um, I started going gray haired at 21, but um, even worse in this last year. But uh, but there's 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 really things that seem complicated that aren't. And that's uh, what I really want to do and super passionate about. And Mike and I started talking at a couple of universities and, and events about uh, about this specific topic and what it means specifically for creators, because it really isn't that complicated and it is really an amazing opportunity. Uh, so we've been all in on this space uh, for a year completely. Took us a year to figure it out, been all in for, for a year. So um, we want to go over just a couple of basic stuff. And uh, this is by no means going to uh, get, cover all of it, I'm a, uh, a very dummy level of this stuff, no matter what, right? So Mike is uh, definitely more technical. Uh, I believe Juan will join us a little bit later. He's like even more technical than that. Uh, but this is going to just be explained to um, a, a dummy, a fifth grader. Uh, so that's uh, that's what I want to do today. Yeah, Mike, you got anything you want to say? 
Yeah. I, I mean, look, you know, it's, it's no different from anything else that we're accustomed to as far as part of finding out what tools we can use to help build our brands and help, you know, create some of those things. I think it's also important to note, we are in a constant state of learning this, right? There's new iterations of this. There's new technology elements that are introduced very, very fast here. Um, so by no means are we going to sit here and claim that we know everything. We just figured out ways that can solve immediate uh, issues by diving into the deep end, by by literally just testing things out, figuring out what works, what doesn't work and why, and trying to understand the logic behind it. And when you really kind of sift through the fog, um, you'll realize pretty quickly that, you know, this is really no different from anything that you're already used to. And I think we'll touch on some of those key points today. Oh, yeah. Um, and hopefully we can open up to questions. So uh, one thing that would be great to start is and this is going to be replayed for for the people that couldn't make it today. But um, but if you have questions like first put off, like what is your level of experience with NFTs? Uh, we know uh, Michelle Clark, she is uh, she knows her stuff. She hosts the, hosts the show called Web 3 by 3. But Jane or anybody else that's here, definitely post like what's your level of understanding uh, of NFTs or Web 3s. And anybody has any questions or comments, like throw them in here because we want at the end, we want to make this more conversational. I hate to be lectured to. And, and uh, so I certainly won't do that. Do that today. I think I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, like early on sometime uh, in like late 2021 or or maybe early 2022, like we had a, a conversation just amongst all of us. It's like, what do we all think NFTs are? And um, the the responses are are widely varying. So hopefully we can we can break down some of those, um, you know, maybe misconceptions as well as some of the truths that are hidden in there. Let's do it. All right. All right. So um, let's get into it. So just like, how do we unlock, what does this even mean to us? Like what are Web3 and NFTs uh, on a basic level, but what does it mean for creators uh, going forward? So uh, simple terms like Web3 is a term that describes the next phase of the internet, right? So uh, it's, it's, the, it's the upgraded internet of the version that we're using now. So like if you have an iPhone or if you hate iPhones, you always get the updates of, of the version, right? So this it's an upgrade that's an improvement on the last part or what we're currently using. We'll get into that a little bit. And then an NFT in its basic form, and it stands for non-fungible token, but it's a proof of ownership of a digital item. If you keep it that simple now, it can be a lot of different things and uh, open up and Mike will get it, get into that. But in its basic terms, that that's, that's what these things are. Um, th this is how... This is the information I went hard to try to understand Web threes and NFTs, uh, and this is what the information that was like given to me uh, and all I could find of what the hell was Web three. And I looked at this uh, read only, write only, or read and write, read write and I mean I don't know what the hell that means. Mike uh, probably does because he's got more of the engineer programmer background, but this is not a good explanation. And this was literally all of the material that I could do to uh, to find this. So. Um, Web one, web two, web three. This is how I wish it was explained to me. So um, web one, you can call it like the information era. It's when the internet started, right? So all of these are different versions of, uh, or upgrades of the internet. So think of like the, the, the companies, if you were around in the nineties uh, through 2005, like what were the programs and stuff that you use? So AOL Instant Messenger, I remember the first time using that, it was a, like the dial up speed. Uh, and you would be able to go on to AOL and you'd get like sports or news, but you would just learn, you could just read the information. So I guess that's what they mean when they say it's like read only. So it's websites that you can't interact with. You're just reading it. So Yahoo, Ask Jeeves, these were all a uh, web crawler. Uh, these are uh, companies that started up in the internet. It's when pe people started to, uh, uh, some people started to create websites, but it certainly wasn't massively adopted at that point. Um, web two is like the social media era. So, uh, the old way that they explained it was like, this is read, uh, and write. So that just basically means you can go onto a website, you can consume the information, but now you can contribute to it. You can be part of the conversation. So that's when Facebook came, you could message people, Twitter, TikTok, all these things, Dropbox, right? These are, these are things that you can now interact with and, and do. It's when, um, Shopify and, and, um, uh, Wix and, and, companies like that that allowed people to kind of create their own websites and and do different things so it's read uh and uh write and that's currently going on right now 
So when everybody says like Web3, Web3, what is Web3? Um, I think it's a lot of different things. And if, and for me, it's the collective ownership era. And that's even vague. Uh, and hopefully we can, by the end of this call, kind of even dial that down to, to get something, a better explanation collectively on it. But think of these new companies that you're hearing now. I mean, you're hearing Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, you're hearing like uh, things called like dApps. Um, and dApps are just decentralized applications. So your Facebook, those are the apps that you used in Web2 or are currently using. These apps are decentralized. They're not owned by Facebook. Some of the, the problems that uh, we saw in these Web2 era of social media was Facebook was like stealing our data. Google was like using information. Like we were, we were contributing to their profits. Like uh, stars would go, on TikTok would go viral and they were, uh, TikTok was the one that was making funny money, funny money and stealing our, uh, our data probably at the same time. So um, when things like uh, the Cambridge Analytica and all these like things, uh, the, all these uh, controversies came out, uh, people started to say like, this is enough, like, like banning Facebook or deleting their Facebook. So the, the improvement of the next era of the internet that we are currently in um, is going to be Web3. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a way where you can not only, uh, control, uh, what you put out there and what, uh, information is given to you, but you can actually, um, own your information as well. So, uh, st stick with this for one quick second. Yeah, yeah. I'll interject. Um, so we're essentially talking about an evolution of accessing information, creating information that is accessible and then owning or owning your own information or owning other people's content that they create. Correct. Um, and that's really where we are in the iteration. So the access to that information is still the same. It's just a matter of the creation and the ownership that has evolved within these various stages. And, you know, it's continuously evolving as we'll, you know, dive into a little bit deeper. The Web3 component is it's, it's a very broad term. Uh, it scares a lot of people away just because it's, I guess it's not really clearly defined. But then again, if you are older, or old enough than like like me, you would remember back in a day when when Facebook wasn't really that understood either, um, or you know even a Twitter or any of those social platforms, and it's really become a um, critical element of our culture today uh, in accessing information, sharing content, and even you know social elements and keeping up with people uh, along the way. So from a creator standpoint, we're talking about these tools. Keep that word in mind, tools that you can use to engage a targeted audience and therefore build a community. Love it, dude. Thank you for stopping me there. And it was like a reverse because usually it's like uh, you're the technical dude and I'm trying to like dummy it down. But that was way better. Uh, and we didn't even we didn't even rehearse this, man. So pre appreciate you jumping in. Uh, and anybody can can my jump mirror, in on there anytime. My that? mirror caught some 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 practice runs, but uh, <laughs> um, all right. Next slide, I guess. I hate giving these things. Um, the best way that, like, for me to understand things, like, also just not, like, conceptually or, like, looking at a, a slide is, like, just understanding, like, an evolution of something. And so one of the, the light bulb moments that clicked with me, and it took a long time, was um, uh, was this, like, encyclopedias. Like, if you think about encyclopedias, and I'm definitely old enough where um, – encyclopedias were like a big thing. Like you go to the gro there was a grocery aisle that they sold encyclopedia Britannica's and it's like, maybe you could only afford like a through D. Uh, so you didn't know much about like Zimbabwe or anything of that part of the world, but this is how like people got information. And, uh, and there was literally encyclopedia salesman. That was like a job. It's actually a really good documentary, uh, on, on uh, encyclopedia salesman. That's, that's, that's legit. But encyclopedia is like, this was before the internet when the internet came along. Um, um, the computers and stuff, and people started getting personal computers, like those encyclopedias became like um, on like CD-ROMs. I remember going into like Radio Shack and being like odd because there was this like on the computer was this uh, Webster's Dictionary uh, or Webster's um, encyclopedia about like uh, African tundra. I just remember it very vividly. So like that was the evolution. The the It went from the physical to the digital and the computer. Web two, which again, like from the technical definition is like the read and write where you can contribute things like Wikipedia came. And uh, that's something that, uh, that uh, people could now go on the internet. They could read about 
you know, African tundra or whatever, and then they can actually contribute to it. Uh, so that was, uh, that's that. And then, you know, what does that mean for web three from the evolution of encyclopedias? Um, I don't know. Right. And I think it could be a cool conversation. I wish Juan was here to, to jump in on that stuff, but I threw in there, um, Reddit, uh, because, uh, Reddit is starting to introduce like a token. So Reddit is a place of forums where they're kind of sharing information. And uh, so not only can you contribute to the conversation, you can own your information, you can get rewarded for your information. Wikipedia is, is still an organization that uh, somebody can like shut off in the server at any point. Uh, but what if you could um, read the information, if you had something to add, you can contribute to it. And if it was valuable, you got tokens or rewards or something for your participation and helping expand the collective knowledge. What do you think there, Mike? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of terms that are thrown in there that we haven't defined yet. I mean, what is a token, right? Like how does that integrate with this ownership element of it? And again, as we start kind of uncovering some of these, uh, you know, peeling back some of these layers of this onion, we'll see that it is everything that we're used to today. Yep. Right. You know, these gift cards, these, you know, these these engagement to, engagement tools that uh, are used for marketing purposes, but also create a sense of um, uh, a sense of importance that you possess them instead of somebody else. And I think that breaking things down to the to the very uh, fundamental psychological element of who your targeted audience or the community that you're trying to build truly are. Um, you're going to notice that a lot of these tools that we're going to be discussing and peeling back here are very similar to everything that we've already been accustomed to. Uh, so a token is nothing more than a reward system that potentially could be used as a way to reward engagement, reward participation. Um, and we'll explain what that means and really how it, how it could be interacted um, and integrated, I should say, uh, between you, your brand, and your content that you're trying to build. Yep. You're starting to see the rumblings of this stuff now. So this is not crazy in the future. I mentioned Reddit, um, which is not launched yet. I don't believe Taylor would know uh, that stuff. I, I heard on the sauce newsletter that, that Twitter is potentially re uh, putting out a token where you could tip people. Uh, so like this stuff is uh, well beyond uh, being in the works for sure. So um, it'll be interesting to, to pay attention, but hopefully, you know, my goal is, uh, for anybody that wasn't like is not caught up on what these things are that they can because i do think it's an opportunity i do think it makes sense to pay attention that this gets them up to speed where they hear like twitter's going to do a token they can actually kind of understand where that's going to go and how that affects them as creators or, or or business owners or entrepreneurs or just people that like twitter um I said this before, but like, so like, what does this all freaking mean? Like, what is Web3? It's, it's the next upgrade of the internet that we currently use. It's each, uh, each version has solved the problem. The Web2 solved the problem for Web1, where you couldn't actually, you just couldn't contribute to it. You couldn't create your own sites really easily. You couldn't add stuff to Wikipedia. You couldn't uh, join in the conversation in an AOL chat or a Facebook chat. Uh, social media is really where that came. And then um, Web3, uh, it's the era of collective ownership. It's they say decentralization, but with solving the problem of um, these platforms are stealing your data. They're just using people that are. Um, and I look, I, I'm cool with it. I'm not like one of those, um, you know, Web three or, or or die type people. I'm just just understanding it. But um, but the reality is like uh, Mark Zuckerberg has gotten like rich off of like funny uh, Facebook posts that you never post, Mike, because you're not uh, a, a very funny guy or a Facebook guy. But uh, it's 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 important to understand that. So getting collective ownership of of things, yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, again, I, I feel like we're we're reiterating a lot of the same points here with respect to the Web two Web three merger. Um, again, this is still a work in progress. There is no all in solution on Web three right now. People who are making those moves are are not necessarily in a position to do so because there still are uh, tremendous barriers to entry to be able to get your community completely engaged on what Web3 is and how you can provide value for that. But as this continuously evolves, we've seen you know, a, a very fast evolution of fixing those issues and really relaying some of the information and tools in a way that you know, people who are not necessarily tech savvy or you know, really up to, up to date on the current lingo of the Web3 world can sit back and kind of digest and say, you know what, I, I get it. I understand enough of it to, to want to learn more. 
Um, and that's where you could just keep taking a step deeper and deeper into that pool. Um, and over time, things will evolve and you'll realize very quickly that, you know, everything you've done on Web 2 is easily mergeable into Web 3 as long as you handhold and you guide your community in that direction. Yep. It is nothing new. And I gave a talk. I was going to just use that presentation um, that I put together last minute uh, at uh, an a event called the Uprising. And I didn't even they asked me to talk on it and I didn't uh, even put the presentation together until lunch before I was going to do it just because I wanted to understand uh, what like marketers were thinking, um, like what their problems were, what they were, what, what they thought about NFTs and what their level was at it became very freaking clear, it freaked the heck out of them. So I just put together a quick presentation that just showed like, this is nothing new. It's just fancy terms. And it's really nothing new for us going back centuries. It's all factored. Like technology is different. The tools are different, but it is exactly the same stuff that we are all familiar with. So nobody should be afraid of, of web three. Unless, uh, unless you think the AI bots are coming, I guess. So, um, what like what does this even mean for creators? I just want to give like a practical example, a couple of practical examples. So, like the dude on the left, I don't know if you saw, you see this Mike, the the ocean spray guy that went viral on TikTok. Yep. So he created a, um, he was doing like one of the the duet videos or or a singing video with uh, Stevie Nicks, and it came viral. And uh, he actually tried to sell this as an NFT. He's like, you know what? I created it. This is my video. Uh, he was the, uh, the, the, the creator of the video. So he's like, like try to sell as an NFT. Now that's going to happen. And that would be awesome if that's how it happened. But Stevie Nicks actually blocked it. Cause she's like, use my music. Uh, so he didn't get to sell it, but creators are going to be able to get to sell their, uh, work as NFTs. They're doing it now, whether that's art, whether that's videos, whether that's music, whether that's books, like creators can sell, um, uh, the NFTs of what they're doing. So I think in the future, you'll see these uh applications these decentral applications that don't profit off of like advertising and throwing you money they they profit of a collective uh group of creators that are creating but the creators own the work that they're doing so that's one example um and then like uh, our good friends frank and krista lenatra um their dream came true uh over the last year because of web3 and nfts and they for, met in the first day of animation school uh, Frank's pickup line was, so you're an animation major too. I guess he had a good smile because that uh, wasn't a great line, but they wanted to be uh, in, in the animation business. They've all had these crazy ideas that they wanted to develop. Animation wasn't for them, but they became renowned in the tattoo industry, uh, like famous in the tattoo industry, but they always wanted to uh, to kind of take those worlds that, that were in their head and kind of create it. So um, last March uh, and uh, last year, uh, our team at Food Fight Studios, we we linked up with with Frank and Krista and their community, and and what ended up happening was selling an NFT that gave people access to help create the stories that Frank and Krista had in their head. So they would draw the art, people would gather together, and what it came is like part part crowdfunding, but part experience, part access. And what's the result of it is in like a couple of weeks, the first ever NFT community written novel is going to be published that was done specifically would not have been possible without nfts or web3 technology so that's a, that's a use case that like i absolutely know we've been part of and it's been amazing to see work and to that point like the art that was created in that project is owned by the community members who who, who bought that right so not only there are do they have access in you know using that web one web two web three analogy not only do they have access to the information uh, and the art, they can also contribute it, contribute to it through engagement tools that are associated throughout the community. But they also have a stake in ownership on the various art pieces that are generated as part of the collection. Yep. Um, where do you want to take this from here, man? Because this was going to be my part just to go through the the Web three. But let's. I mean, we can. If anybody has any questions or stuff that they want to hit, like hit us in the comments or or hit Taylor up. But uh, yep. we can also continue the conversation while, while we wait. Yeah, I mean, look, the questions are more than welcome because, again, I think that we need to really understand where we are in the weeds versus where we're losing right. people on yeah. some of the ways that we're explaining it. So the questions are are critical because, um, you know, we just want to make sure that this holds value for everybody that's here. Yep. But I think that as we as we start narrowing down this funnel um, and truly understanding what the technology is, I think that it's more um, a digestible, I suppose, if we start segueing it more towards a content creator, 
right? Like really start talking about specificities on how we can engage in that community building effort, really focus on some of the goals that um, that these content creators uh, experience and are looking to achieve in any form of content that they that they're that they're engaged with. So just you know, using an AI tool, I just pumped in like, what are the top three goals for content creators? And it's it's really hard for me to argue with the three that came up. So you know, number one is you want to build a community. Um, you know, this is you know, one of the boilerplate, I guess, responses, because everybody in content creation wants to build a community so that their content becomes visible. Uh, but there's multiple ways to do that, right? And a lot of that is using these web one, web two formats, social media, paid advertising, your standard good old word of mouth, um, you know, newsletters or blog, uh, blog subscriptions, YouTube or video content that generates subscriber lists. Uh, all of these are these various marketing strategies that you can really take a targeted audience based around a specific topic of interest and narrow that down into a community. Now, segueing from that community building effort, you want to develop consistent content that engages the community. What makes it relevant? What makes them want to come back day after day or pop open that email and make sure that it's relative to their, you know, what their interest level is on what your content provides? Um, so you need to be able to provide that value incentive uh, for your community to keep them engaged, to keep them a community member. Um, accurate content, intriguing content, up-to-date content, um, user input solutions. So taking advice from um, from the community on which direction that you should expand on or do a little bit more investigating on. Um, these are all ways that you can continuously engage with the community. Uh, and then the third goal, which I guess everybody tries to rush through uh, prematurely in most cases, um, how do you monetize the content? Um, well, I mean, you have specific ways to monetizing it through paywalls. Uh, you can have subscriber lists. You can have memberships. You can have ad generation revenue on streaming platforms like YouTube. You can expand on that with sponsorship opportunities, depending on your reach and the amount of people that are engaging with that community. Um, these are all opportunities for monetizing that content. So these are very standard goals that I guess we're all pretty used to shouldn't be really saying anything that's new to people. But I guess the question for a topic like we're talking about today is, how does Web3 provide a solution for these three goals? So let's break them down individually, you know, one by one. Let's talk about building a community. Well, Web3 does provide an opportunity to build a community, mostly in a decentralized format. And we talked about that ownership earlier. Uh, where you don't have that Facebook who's monetizing your data. Um, you're just hanging out with people, building it up on this various, um, we'll call it platform in the sense of a contract, which will break down a little bit, uh, uh, break down a little bit deeper later on. But, you know, this is really where these content creators are able to connect and collaborate with their audience, right? So without the need for intermediary platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Google, um, you have an opportunity to build this collection and grow within that community. Um, there are specific social tools that you can use in conjunction with these Web3 solutions, and you should be using them. Platforms like Discord, platforms like Twitter. You want to keep that open lines of communication open with your community, um, but building it up, there's these various tools that can provide solutions and help build and, and I guess, solidify uh, those relationships. The second can I, thing, oh, I was just going to say, can I jump in really quick just with a couple of comments and, and questions from the community and maybe, maybe your next point, we'll have to do something with that. But um, Jane mentioned earlier, um, you know, her, her goal is really wanting to learn how to implement, to try it, try out the tools to, figure out how to kind of like dabble in it. So that's one. Jane also mentioned that if on the on the note of a community book, um, which a couple comments as well around the fact that like NFTs can be multiple types of different media, books, music. Um, but on the note of a book, like if she, Jane asked, if a community writes a book together, how do people outside the community, you know, read it or engage with it if they can read it, but can't contribute? Um, does that go up in value? How do people make money from that? So I think that that's something we might we might address um, here in a minute. And then also Linda is asking, not really asking, but a really great comment that Linda Ray 
posted in here is that Web3 has so much potential for small business. And I totally agree with that. There is a stigma still. Um, and Linda mentioned that there's there's a lot to do with gaming, music, art, you know, business utility, but it is a bit slow to start. So wondering if we could dive into either of those questions as we go through this. So let's put the, the Linda one aside because it's definitely important. And, and mm -hmm. Mike, would just talk, we can definitely talk about some of the stuff that we've done um, and just using different terms and, and making it more simple and meeting people where they are. Um, back to James, if you don't mind me, Mike, take it. I'll take that one. Good. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, look, NFTs, people think that they are JPEG, right? So, but the reality is it could be any, it's proof of ownership of any digital asset, right? So we are moving in a digital asset world um, in one way, shape or form. So one thing that is interesting here, um, this is like my kids, they asked for this gift card. It's a Roblox gift card. And this is one of the things that's like, shoot, this stuff is way more than just like overpriced JPEGs. Uh, this is a this is what they asked for Christmas, not an Amazon gift card, not cash. They asked for a Roblox gift card. It's twenty five bucks, if uh, it, which gives them like five hundred Robux. It's like he's already they already understand the concept of exchanging cryptocurrency and changing like fiat dollars with cryptocurrencies. It says it comes with a free virtual item NFT and discover millions of worlds, right? The metaverse, like they, they, they servers and all that stuff. Like they already understand that the kids are growing up with that. So it's, it's foreign to, to me and, and, and some other people that I've chatted with, but like it's here now. So, um, but Roblox is a great job of explaining, um, at, at meeting them where they're at. Me, kids really understand. I get a free virtual item. I get a free skin. I get a free hat. I get a free uh, skateboard and it's like great. Like they kids love this stuff. Their digital identities are important to them. Um, that kids also know dollars and, and they know Robux and that's what they want. And, um, and discover millions of worlds is a perfect way of saying like, come hang out in our metaverse. So that's, that's one way I think when we can address some of the stuff, Mike, that we've done to help with, with um, maybe Linda's question with the, the Jane with the book. So I don't know if it's related specifically to the battle bunnies, um, um, or just in general, of how you can like monitor or create an NFT as a book. The book isn't an NFT in our case. The, the 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 NFT that was purchased gave people access to be able to kind of contribute to the book, name the lands, uh, be there where Frank and Krista like drew up and like contribute. Like maybe this one should have this trait. Um, their names uh, uh, in the book are like the names of their discords. So they actually got to be part of the story. Like think of if Star Wars or Harry Potter. Um, uh, and they invited you, like JK Rowling invited you to kind of help uh, uh, like riff off some ideas for Harry Potter. So that was the uh, experience. And by owning uh, the Battle Bunnies NFT, it gave access to that. But also to your point, um, what, uh, how could people read it? That's a great uh, question because that's one of the things that got me to understand like, hey, uh, uh, we own an animation company, a, a content creative studio. Like, how is this, how could NFTs work? Um, and I came across a project called Stoner Cats, and it's by uh, Ashton Kutcher and, and Mia Kunis. And it was pretty simple. You get these like cats um, that you buy. It's a JPEG that you buy as an NFT. And um, by, but you can't watch the cartoon unless you own one. So you go on their website, you connect your wallet, and it says, okay, that proves that this person owns a stoner cat. Enjoy, watch the show. And then also you got access to their community to be able to do other things. So like that is one way. I think there's mil uh, multiple applications for these things, but that is that is one specific, specific way. You got anything to add there, Mike? Yeah, so getting, I guess, more specific on the monetization element of it, these are all ways that community members could access that content that's created by that project, right? That animation. But what happens if you already watched the animation? What happens if you don't want to see it anymore? What happens if it's not what you expected? Well, you as the owner of that token have the ability to sell it and resell it. And if if that project is in higher demand, then the value of the token that you hold is potentially worth more than you paid for it. Um, and that's the ownership element of it, right? So let's let's remove that example because I guess it is in the NFT world. And let's let's talk about a very practical real world life example that we all uh, know, love or hate, depending on who you are, um, you know, airline miles, right? So we all have airline miles in some way. Some of them are linked to our credit card. Some of them are just linked to us traveling. 
um, you know, after a period of time, those airline miles, they just evaporate. They don't exist anymore. It's a marketing strategy that forces you to continuously go back to the airline and in order to either accumulate more, cash them in, which means that you'll probably end up buying more tickets later on uh, because you did see value in using those miles. But what happens if you couldn't use them uh, and you spent all this time building them up? Well, you just lose them. Sorry. You can donate them. You can gift them to somebody. But what if there was an actual marketplace where you can actually sell them? And, you know, the marketplace is what determines the price of those miles, not the airline themselves. Um, that's really where we can kind of draw the distinction on where, what these tokens or JPEGs in that particular example of the cats, um, how, how much value they provide within the project and more importantly, the community members associated with that project. Yep. We say like NFTs are like, what is it? Like, it's not just one thing. It's a million different things that it can be. And for us, it's really just opened our eyes to think outside the box and figure out other things that we can do to do to create things that are, we're already doing in our business, but just add a different element to it of fun, excitement. Um, and I don't know if we should announce it, but I feel like we, we should because um, Jane asked, like she said that she just wants to like get started and test it out. And that's exactly what we've always uh, been doing and what we're doing. So in our Discord, Mike, you've been behind the scenes creating um, a like a you you explain it, man, because I want to make sure that uh, that I get it right. You the you, you're rocking it. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's a token based reward system, right? And we've all seen the deli cards where you show up every day and you get a punch on your card, and then maybe after your tenth visit, you'll get a free sandwich or a free coffee or something. And again, that's redeemable only in that particular area. It is a marketing tool that that organization uses. And, you know, I guess we'll indirectly uh, touch on Linda's question at this point, too, because it does focus around some of the business element of it. Um, but it's a reward system, right? It's a marketing tool that you use in your business to engage consumers, to reward them on participation, and therefore provide them some sense of value, in this case, a free sandwich or a free coffee, um, for thanking them for their continuous support and that and that business. Um, so what we're doing and we're running beta tests on right now in the Food Fight server is we're going to be introducing introducing a token uh, a tokenized economy. Now I want to use that word very loosely because typically you know words like that tend to scare people, but we are going to be building an internal economy where creators have the ability to exchange their services, their insights, their knowledge um, for these tokens. And these tokens are going to be an inter an intercommunity currency um, that we can reward people with based on engagement, um, that they can earn or be paid for other services that they provide. Um, it's, it's basically... Um, you, you, you like to use the term Chuck E. Cheese tokens or Disneyland dollars. It's just a way that we have the ability to um, bring our collective expertise to the table and say, hey, you know what? If you want an hour of my time, this is, you know, it's going to cost you X amount of tokens. Yep. Now, all of these tokens and not to get on the technical side of it, they don't necessarily they don't necessarily need um, this liquidity value that so many people hear horror stories about in the Web3 and the crypto space, right? It doesn't necessarily need to have that component attached to it in order to have this engaging tool that is, is able to thrive within the community. Yeah, yeah. So um, and what we're doing is we're experimenting, right? So we're just starting out right now. We're going to like make this live in a couple of days, but it's going to be like, just think of it as like a rewards, levels, points, things like that. We're going to be testing out different ways that we can do these. And and um, so just look for that. And I think they're called scoops. And I'm excited about it because I think um, it we, we are always the ones that just kind of roll up our sleeves and, and, and try to figure some stuff out on our own. So this is an experiment for us at this point, but it is not like cryptocurrency or anything like that. This is like a reward system similar that you'd see in some of these even Roblox games. Um, so that's something that we're excited to, uh, to kind of roll out soon, because I think, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, the, the, the token, uh, economy is, uh, is, is real clear. I do want to intro, um, Juan for the money real quick. He is, uh, he's just popping in to, to say hello. Juan is the dude that really was our ninja. Um, really how it happened is like, when we had questions, we would go to Juan, Juan would like 
educate Mike and explain to him. And then Mike would like dummy it down to get to my level. And then I would still not understand it. But Juan has been huge uh, in our education in this world. He's also an educator himself. He, he volunteers his time and teaches kids how to build robotics. And, uh, and is one of the dudes, if you've seen our YouTube uh, uh, series with Juan, we just did this like lightning round and threw some words at him. He like explains things so simply. So thank you for coming, Juan. Hey, what's up? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit late. I think we got a time zone mix up there, but love to shoot back and forth about whatever it is you're going on. It looks like you guys are talking about robots, which is like a great example of uh, just tokenization, right? Like it's not that complicated. We've been doing this forever. We're just doing it a little bit differently yep. in this environment. We were talking about... Um, we're talking about like creators, right? So this audience is a, a group of, of creators that are either trying to build uh, their own community or just understand how uh, the new tools like AI and NFTs and, and how, how, you know, what is that landscape and, and does it fit into what the stuff that they're doing? So we kind of just started off just explaining uh, what does the, even the term Web3 mean? Uh, and that's kind of where, where we're at. But, uh, but yeah, man. Yeah, um, that's awesome. It's been... It's been cool working with you guys and i know that we uh took down some uh pretty big walls together uh so that was awesome uh and i know you guys have just been running away with it um i've been spending a lot of time doing a bunch of different stuff but i think i'm planning some trips here to uh meet up with some people at some hackathons uh coming up here so it should be a good time there's some stuff happening in tokyo which should be a good time um and just a couple of other things that i think might be in the works pretty soon are kind of cool so new year new projects uh yeah what are you guys excited about right now <laughs> where to begin man it seems like every day it's something <laughs> different um you know just keeping in mind i know we can we can really dive down the rabbit hole in the technicalities of this but you know this is really just a basic intro to you know some of these tokens some of these web3 initiatives um you know we've we've really been trying to bridge the gap, not just on the NFT or the Web3 side, but integrating it into some sort of an open source AI component and solution as well. Um, and, you know, we've we've come up with some really cool tools that, you know, are going to somehow merge all of these worlds together, um, to quote your hat. And um, I think that, you know, the future is here, but it's even more promising on how fast these things are changing. And um, I think that the only way we can kind of keep up with it is to remain engaged with it. Uh, so, you know, you are um, at the tip of the spear on the, um, I guess, the evolution and the, the, the content creation side of the technicalities of it. And I, it's, it's critical um, to understand where those things are heading as we continuously try to figure out applications for this tool, um, you know, in these, in these content creator and brand building exercises. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a lot all at once. If you're coming from uh, a like like a big paradigm shift, like if you're used to doing things uh, completely one way and then you completely switch it up, um, I can see how that would be difficult. But I think a lot of the times we we add the complexity ourselves. Like I know I make things a lot more complicated sometimes than they need to be. Uh, so sometimes it's just about taking a step back and just asking like, what are my, what am I actually trying to do here and not getting caught up in the hype of it all. And like the, the jargon of it all, and just realizing breaking, breaking the big problems down into smaller problems and realizing like, how, how is this a solution for my community? How does this help, uh, my cause or my passion project get closer to where it needs to go? And it's like, if it's your only tool then like if your hammer is your only tool, everything looks like a nail, right? So like, it's good to have it in your arsenal as something that is, that is useful when conducting e-commerce. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different tools. And I think this is a, a really interesting one that we're, we're, we're starting to see like grow some legs and get a little bit faster and a little bit more mature. Um, I have a question. And maybe maybe one you can help you can help answer this but like i think it's just a question overall for uh, probably on behalf of everyone who's listening to this or will listen to it is like what is true like what is truly the benefit for 
creators? What's the difference between doing something in like Web3, having, um, you know, an NFT collection, doing something decentralized versus just like doing it in a traditional capacity, like selling, you know, selling your courses or just selling mem regular old membership access to things like what does that benefit look like for like content creators who are um, content creators, business coaches, entrepreneurs, people who are basically like selling their services? Like what are the specific use cases in that? Yeah. Um, so starting from like the most basic level is like the ownership of your content. Um, so like a, a lot of times when you're posting to these platforms, uh, your ownership is debatable. Um, and so like if you're posting to a Web3 platform, uh, it, it acts more like a shell around the, your content that you own um, and you have access to um, than, than an actual storage of your content. So like when I post something to Facebook, I upload to their servers. Um, when I upload it to, to Twitter, I upload to the Twitter servers. And so like if I upload um, some content through like my lens profile, then that just gets uploaded to a file co file coin, um, uh, a, uh, not necessarily a file coin account. I don't think that's correct to say, but it gets uploaded to file coin um, and I am the custodian of it. And so like I can say wh whether or not it ha uh, people have access to it, I can like um, add, um, like collector fees, uh, and stuff like that. So like I can immediately begin to monetize my content and gate that monetized content, um, like seamlessly, uh, built in. And so like the trade-off is, is that, that, that sounds great. Um, and that sounds perfect. Um, everybody wants that, but like, does it scale and like, are the people there? And so right now, uh, one could argue that that is, that is not at scale because like all the eyeballs aren't there right now compared to like where we were um, in like the FOMO frenzy, right? Like the fear index has moved a little bit more conservative. Um, so you, it's weeding out a lot of the people who were just in here in for like a land grab and where the eyeballs were. Um, but so like technically those are, those are the... Um, the advantages, you know, so like if you value security, if you value like ownership of your content and like you don't want to be like demonetized by YouTube at some point, um, then then that is an option. But th you could also make the counter argument that says like, well, it doesn't matter if I'm demonetized if nobody's going there to actually watch my stuff anyways. So I think it, it's important for like if you are moving your audience from one place to another that you tell them why like why do you why am i asking you to put this different url in your browser now why am i asking you to click this different link what's well, because like when you spend your time here more of like your your time that you spend watching my stuff goes to benefit me instead of a big corporation and i think that's that's the bottom line right there is that it, yeah it's a little harder um it's a little bit more difficult. It's a little bit more nuanced, but the benefits are that like you can't take it away. It's like get, gaining knowledge, right? Like it's hard to learn something. It's hard to gain a skill, but once you have that, somebody people can't take a skill away from you. Um, and so that is, I think, the big benefit is the skill that you gain of of custody over your content and and gating your content. Um, and it's a skill that like you got to learn how to do it. So. It's a great point, man, because if you think about it um, and uh, and some of the people that we met here, we met at the, the Creator Economy Expo um, uh, and, and the, the big message there is like, don't build on rented land is like his little um, uh, tagline. But the, the, the reality, if you think about it, like I, I knew of um, I knew someone that was like famous in Vine, like their whole the, the, <laughs> the old app. Right. And yeah. that was everything they had. And then just like Vine just shut down. Right. Or. <laughs> um, you know, Taylor's been keeping us up informed, informed uh, in like the, all the change in social media and like Instagram was like, we're a video platform. No, we're a, a picture platform. No, we're a video. Pl like the, the things that they can do and change or change your monetization policies or just shut down overnight. It just is a real risk to uh, to, to build on rented land, as, as Joe Polizzi would say um, to your point, man. I mean, I hear a lot of people talk about that lens protocol. I've not jumped in on it. And maybe like you said, maybe maybe people aren't ready for it at scale. Um, but I do think that's the future, man. I do think that, uh, that, uh, the days of, uh, of, of the, the Zuckerbergs or, or what have you 
of just controlling your data, deciding what happens with it, deciding who sees what you put out there, and then changing, being able to change on the fly however they see fit, are, are coming to an end with things with you know yeah. dudes like you who've been a, a pioneer at, at kind of building the technology. I'll push back on that a little bit. I don't think it's coming to an end. I think they're going to figure out ways to integrate the technology into their system as well. And they'll find ways to monetize it because that's just the way that they're trained. They're a public company. They need to show yeah. those profits. And I think that's really the advantage that, you know, understanding where we're at in, in this space, Ding, um, is really the important element here because um, we can call that BS when they manipulate the technology or use terms in the technology that actually don't use the technology. Um, and I think that if that if that just basically reinvents the same wheel that we've come to hate about them, um, you know, I think that it's going to expose you know those efforts a little faster and really open people's eyes that this technology does provide that solution not just for creators, but for those communities as well. You know, you talk about ownership of your content um, and, you know, why am I going to send my community a new link? Well, it actually works in your benefit just like it does mine. And it's a mutual ownership, a mutual benefit that I think people will start to understand and appreciate. Um, but just like everything else, it needs that information to be exposed. It needs that information to be out there that indicates that this is a direction where this is all heading. And if people start understanding it and if the onboarding process continues to evolve in a way that it ultimately becomes that app on your phone that makes waffles when you when you push it, um, you know, we're going to get to a good place where the technology is going to just speak volumes about where this content is created, the ownership elements behind the content and really offer the freedom that I guess this content creation world really expects. Yeah, I want to I want to ask also about we kind of touched on this earlier, but like I think that it it deserves to go maybe even a little bit more in depth on which is like why is is this web3 space so much more conducive to communities and the way that communities are formed almost like so innately it's almost like the the principles of like web2 were like okay, you build a product, whatever you are, you're, you're a brand, you're a small business, you're an enterprise business, you build your product, and then you build your advocates and your, your customers and your community like around that product. And it's almost like a completely 180 shift in this Web3 space where um, it's like very, very community driven, especially when you think about some of these like NFT collections and why you can't like scroll crypto Twitter without seeing like good morning, wag me, like all of these, you know, sort of like acronyms that we've come to identify with being in this like, you know, web three crypto space. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I just I think about it, like, from that perspective, because web three is like very community driven, it's almost like the decentralization of it all just makes it more conducive to organic communities, because it's not uncommon for like web three you know, NFT collections or whatever it is to, I don't know, kind of create a community before even creating like whatever the product is like, and that's, I think a, it's a common theme that I've seen. So I'm wondering if we could like dive into that a little bit. Hopefully that was clear. I, I think it's just the simple as a mutual benefit, right? I mean, you know, as, as, as somebody who watches or subscribes to a channel on YouTube, um, you can sit there for hours and watch a guy play pool. Right. But at the end of the day, what do you get out of that? You know, maybe you get some information. Maybe you get, you know, kill some time with some boredom. Maybe you pick up a little bit of tricks and tips and stuff. And maybe that's worth your time. But what community are you building by watching that? What community are you a part of by engaging in that? You're just you're you're sitting in a movie theater where everybody's facing the same direction, absorbing the same amount of information versus a mutually beneficial technology that offers a value incentive for you to not just participate in, to be a member of, to be in the in crowd of, but also figure out some way, shape or form down the line to monetize or own elements of that particular project. That's the mutual benefit of the content creation. And I think that's what the technology truly does offer. Um, obviously, there are bad players that can manipulate that. And we've seen those in the headlines and those really put a black stain on where things are, have kind of evolved to. But um, I think if we dismiss those bad actors for who they are, 
understanding the technology and the value proposition behind the technology from both the content creator and a, a consumer um, really, really speaks volumes that go above and beyond any any malpractices that it can provide. And I, and I know one, you got to bounce in a, in a couple minutes. Um, but if you want to add in anything to this, but feel free. I also feel like if anybody can comment, like uh, we're just scratching the iceberg. And I, like Juan is amazing, so um, we should all try to like if if this is valuable, and we want to hear more from Juan. Like comment here so that we can pr show him some proof, so that we can kind of do more of these series and, and and expand on these conversations and how they directly relate to to creators. But do you want anything to add, Juan, to to that? Yeah, I think going back to what i think was the original question like why is this conducive to to communities um i think it's like it, that's a good question for the communities themselves and i think like one like and so like if we look at it that way it's like it answers a problem for communities and that's like i want to have a sense of belonging i want to feel respected um and like for a lot of people like that that you know board ape or that you know nft that they have that they really care about uh provides them that sense of belonging and that sense of of respect if they have a particular one that you know means a lot to them or you know um they can trace back to like events where they have like met a lot of their friends and stuff like that like me me <laughs> me personally right like uh i i feel like i am very um attracted to like the hacker community and like just the amazing things that I see people building um, all the time. And that's why I like travel. I make specific trips just to go to these like uh, ETH global things um, and, and hack on stuff and work with people. Um, so like, I really enjoy the, the sense of trailblazing. Um, I think is that like, I don't know if all of this is going to work, but how cool would it be if it did? It and even if even <laughs> if it, it doesn't <laughs> even if it doesn't uh i i think about so like i think about mike a lot right like mike mike uh i don't know if you're mike just had a baby like i'm gonna just put your stuff on blast like is that okay i hope that's okay your baby is like, that's, <laughs> congratulations uh Thank on your you. baby and like I, I want I want some day to, for my kids to be like if I get kids like or if I raise kids or whatever I want them to be like dad took risks and dad tried to make a better place and like in the cheesiest like most altruistic way like that's really one of my biggest motivations out here and it's like that's what I hear from others when I go to these places so that's where I spend a, a good amount of my time and so like when when you're part of a community and you have like the founders of a protocol like sitting at the table there till one in the morning because you're hacking on something that's going to be presented at 9 a.m the next day it's like oh shit! like people are really motivated for me to build this thing like there's really something here that's that, that could be useful to a lot of people um and and i think that there's something exciting there because there's a potential to create things that we didn't have the ability to create before um, but it's also like let's not mistake it for this like uh you know it's like no one's a guru here like it's 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 still just a tool like we 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 make it better it doesn't make us better and so like when when we look at these things and we use them to benefit our communities or to benefit ourselves like i hope that we can remember um that they don't define us like we we define them so like the 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 memes and like the merch is fun and it's cool and it, it is it is great but like the message here is all is also like we can actually build whatever we want because like there's a virtual machine out there that we can all decide to use and, and agree on making our transactions on and so like if you decide to move some of your community all of your community over to there there is already some people in that community and they might want what you have that i think is 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 one of the takeaways is that there is a community of people who value decentralization who value like owning their own content and who are trailblazing and they're willing to try new things and there's so many people who are just like oh you're a crypto x or because like you're participating in the scene and you're 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 giving to the environment um people are are, are a little bit more willing to like hear what's your particular shtick 
you know, whatever, whatever that might be. If you're a, a crypto artist, a crypto rapper, like just adding that like crypto thing to me now just means it's like the cyberpunk of like the eighties, right? Like you're, you're hacking on stuff and you're trying new things. Like when you're trying chat GPT and you're trying to see like, how does this thing even work? Like you guys are hackers, you know? So it's, it's really cool to be in a, in a part of a, a hacking community where I, I consider anybody who's building something without a, a set of instructions, you're a hacker, like you're hacking stuff together. So what, I think the, that is really cool. That's one of the cool things about these, um, these new tools is like they've opened up more ability for people. So like uh, there's a lot of people that are curious and like really want to try these things, but they haven't been able to because they had to know to code, they had to do these things. So um, the fact that you can do chat GPT and, and test out different things, um, it just it gives more access to people to explore more, be curious more, build more things, uh, do that collectively together. So um, it's, I'm super excited about where uh, where we're going with this. There's a million different more um, rabbit holes in each one of these topics, but uh, but I feel like we should um, we should get you back on the regular uh, one and just deconstruct some of these things in a very simple way and just uh, chop it up a bit. Yeah, for sure. I'm in the i've been doing a lot of robot stuff uh this recently so yep which is which is also in starting to i'm trying to like mix stuff like you guys were saying right like how do we get these kids to learn like neural networks so they can make decisions for their robots and then later on they can use that in a job you know so like um i think that's really cool but that is you might hear my teams that's my other laptop i have got to get going i'm sorry <laughs> see you man we'll catch you appreciate, appreciate jumping it. in. bye one and, and, hey congrats uh, for stopping by thanks dude uh and I'll t i'm gonna tell him this uh so you can catch the replay on, on this but uh literally i hit him up to like hey, yo my kid's got this um robotics uh uh, project he has to do in class so he gave me some advice on on what to do and the kid ended up uh creating um a wine glass cleaner which i don't know um you know in you know fourth grade or whatnot so juan is uh is amazing <laughs> definitely need to get him back here more where do you want to go here do you want to wrap this up because i know for me it was always like there's so much information and it's like i just had to grasp it a little bit that's why it took me so long to understand it and then just like kind of go mm -hmm. back and stew on it I feel like this is a series that we could continue and, and, and anybody here that saw this or sees this, like, just give us some advice. What was clear? What wasn't clear? What, where do you want to expand on next? And then if anybody wants to join in on the conversation, I think that's what this whole, what the whole thing is about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we scratched the surface of it and kind of like dipped our feet in to explore it a little bit. I mean, there's so much that, um, that we aren't using right now as creators and could be using things that we could talk about. We barely even dove into like blockchain and NFTs, um, you know, really under the hood. So that's definitely stuff that we can dive into. And I'm sure like if we just let this thing run for hours, we probably wouldn't run out of things to talk about on this topic. So Correct. it's definitely worth uh, diving into again, maybe in some sort of a follow-up. So here's what I say we'll do. Um, if um, because we're going to introduce this thing now, this we're just testing it, right? Think of this as a reward. It's not cryptocurrency. This is nothing. This is just right in our Discord. Um, they're called scoops. So uh, if anybody can tell us what they learned, what they like, what resonated the most, um, what they want to learn on more about, what wasn't clear, um, we'll give them how many scoops. We haven't thought about that. Ten scoops uh, each, and there's going to be a leaderboard of who has got the most scoops and all that. Oh yeah. Uh, so that would be very helpful for us and, uh, let's test it out too. So like you guys can understand, uh, some of the stuff that we're playing in real time with, and that is tokenized economy. So, and hopefully it's something that we have fun with here, but if it's something mm -hmm. that helps you in, uh, in, in, in doing stuff on your own with other, other communities or, or whatnot, like that's awesome. That would be, be amazing. So, uh, Michelle's, uh, Mike, uh, named it scoops, which I thought, which I thought was genius. Uh, so let's give some people some scoops and I know most people probably have an NFT here that I saw in the comments anyway, but we're going to do a PO app, which is a very, very, very simple way to, um, get your first NFT. If you've never had one, you don't need a digital wallet. You can do it with an email. We'll give you instructions, but uh, a PO app again, we said is just proved that you were at a talk or you were somewhere. So this will be part of our scoops and our, mm -hmm. our rewards and our leaderboard at the end of this community building cohort. Um, we're, uh, if you were here, um, uh, we'll, we'll take note of it and we will give you a link that you could get your first NFT. It'll be a nice 
image I'm sure will be amazing because Taylor's going to create it. And it'll just <laughs> prove that you were here and, and the topics that we talked about. And, uh, and there'll be some, some cool things we'll do with those things as we go. Mm -hmm. yep. So what do we, do we want to drop in main, in, in the main chat and discord a little, maybe a little takeaway from this. And then those, those people who, uh, or do we want to do it right here in this chat? Anyone who, who responds on that can get there. Well, we, we have 10, everybody 30? that respond. Yeah. Anybody that jumped in here that, so that watched okay. this, we can, um, we can send them a link, uh, to the email and, uh, and give them their, their PO app. We'll get that out oh, in the wow, next awesome. day or so. Oh. And some it'll like Linda, it'll be a, it'll, it'll be a very crowded wallet of PO apps and some that maybe don't have an NFT yet or a PO app. This will be the first one. And, uh, I remember the very first one that I got and it started me on a crazy journey, um, okay. where we are continuing to, to do some cool Linda things. Linda says PO app is my new web three addiction and hard good, agree with free. you, Linda. They're free. <laughs> so it's a good, it's a great addiction to have on that. Any, anything you want to jump in and, and, uh, finish off Mike? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we, again, we we did just, you know, scratch the surface. I don't even know if we got to a lot of the uh, the the terminologies and the definitions on really what to expect and, you know, just some of the things that you can hear. But I'll leave it off with this. Don't get caught up in a lot of the a lot of the noise. Right. Just understand that there's potential here. There's value. And the more that we all learn together, the more you're going to start tailoring those tools to fit the needs that you want to build in your content and for your community. Um, and look, we're, we're, if you're listening to this later, if you're participating in it live, um, you obviously have a goal in mind for building your brand, whether that's a business, whether that's, you know, your content creation brand, any content that you're trying to pump out there, a community building effort, whatever that is, just keep that goal in the forefront. Everything else that we'll dive into on, on more specifics in this, in this Web3 world is just a way for you to integrate Th these elements in helping you achieve those goals. Um, so as long as we can keep it at that basic level for now, we can get into what is a smart contract? What is an NFT? How do, how do I engage or explain what an NFT is to other people uh, that aren't familiar with it? Because there is a lot of, a lot of these elements that we have to truly uh, break down and simplify in order just not to thoroughly understand them, but more importantly, show the value proposition behind them. And I think we can do that pretty specifically uh, over the next couple iterations of this, this topic um, and really kind of help you navigate the waters a little bit more. But bottom line here is everybody has a very creative mindset. Keep that mindset don't get mired down in you know the technical elements that we're we're introducing here. Just keep in mind that those creative elements that you have and that you're so good at are going to be complemented using this technology. Yep. And uh, Taylor, what do we have coming up here? I guess uh, we have the AI challenge, which there's still a, what a day or two to submit their AI. Yeah. So if you are part of our cohort, hopefully you are because you're listening to this, um, definitely submit your AI art, your AI images. Um, you can find the details of that in Discord under the events. Um, essentially right now, it's when, when are we wrapping it up on the 10th? So you have until February 10th. And days. all you have to do is go look at the prompt. It's creator cliches, life cliches. So any uh, cliches that you've found annoying or cliches that you love any you know common phrases figures of speech whatever it is turn it into some cool ai art use whatever ai tool that you want to do that and then just submit it in discord there's a channel called ai submission um just throw it in there that's all you have to do we're going to turn these into a really cool nft collection speaking of web3 things um and this isn't the only ai challenge that we're doing throughout this process we'll have a couple more um, over the next several weeks. So this is just the first, uh, the first one along with that theme of cliches. So go hop on Twitter, find your favorite cliche from your Twitter feed and uh, turn it into one. So you have until Friday. That's Friday, right? Friday the 10th. Yeah. Yep. Friday the 10th. Friday the 10th. And then, um, yep. And then next week we'll get on a, a call and we'll, we'll do a little fun game. We'll, we'll swap them up. You don't know which one you're going to get. We'll make that an NFT collection. People can trade. We'll figure out some cool, fun ways to, uh, to put a game into that, uh, this whole cohort and really this whole year, we're going to be doing some stuff like this. But I think, um, if you're interested to see how like really simple ways, how NFTs, um, that aren't like the, the, 
projects and the things you've heard about, um, but how NFTs uh, can can build community, uh, have fun uh, with other people, engage. Like this is uh, this is the start of of something that we're doing. So you can watch us watch us do it. Uh, and you can you can see the results for yourself, and and hopefully it uh, it works, and hopefully you all have fun doing it, and you could you could take that away as well. So thanks everybody for coming in here today live. Thanks everybody for listening later. Thanks Juan for jumping up. I'm glad that we can get him more because when you hear him speak, he definitely explains it way better, way <laughs> better than 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 me. So we got to get him back up here, so it'll help a lot more people. Cool. And don't forget, we've got a Twitter space that's happening tomorrow, Thursday. Hang out with us in Discord on Friday. And yeah, this is this is almost week two in the books, you guys. This has been a good one. And we've we've only got a long and interesting journey to go from here. So yep, lots of going on. You got web Mike, you got web three by three and Michelle, right? You got a uh is that today? Yep, today at four o'clock Eastern, uh in in LinkedIn. So okay. uh, we, we I shared the uh I shared the link on uh, my profile there. So check it out. Drop it in main chat on Discord so we can hop in. Yep. Definitely so if you want to you hear what they're saying, I don't know what the topics are this week, but check that out. Michelle, Mike, um, and Mark, they do a great job of, of talking about like real world examples of what's happening in the news and, and this new technology as well. So uh, tons of stuff, man. I'm excited to check that out as well. We'll see everybody on the flip side. Hope this was valuable. If it wasn't, let us know. If it was, let us know. And we'll uh, we'll either continue it or we'll stop it. So thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.